about the our, our philosophy about protecting children because in all honesty all of us we all have families we all want to make sure that there are no more child victims in our society right. especially right. sexual right. abuse yeah. we stand for that don't we yeah. 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 our purpose today is to bring education to the public our purpose is to help disseminate the facts regarding sex offenders, sex offender laws, sex offender civil commitment centers like here at Colinga State Hospital today, and also to address the hysteria in the politics that drives this insanity called sex offender laws in America and California. Yeah. Yeah. As I mentioned, my name is Tom Madison. And I'm from Portland, Oregon. I'm really a concerned citizen because, like I've already said, Bill of Rights is a very important thing, but they certainly under assault with respect to all areas of our life today, but especially on the cutting edge of this assault on basic legal rights, certainly represented by what goes on behind the walls of this building behind me. That's right. By the time I get done with my talk today, I wanted you to all be at least take with you three ideas. And that are these, sex offender laws are virtually worthless the way they are written. Right. Second of all, sex offender laws create brand new child victims. Yeah, yeah, here. And thirdly, and the third point to take with you today, is the sex offender laws represent absolutely the most sloppy and careless lawmaking ever in the state of California. Yeah! <laughs> to begin with, I want you to understand what the term sex offender means. Now, most people on the street here in California would tell you, well, it's the, it's the worst of the worst. It's the uh, persons who kidnap children, they rape and murder them, the typical kinds of news that makes it to the evening news. And that's really all America pretty much understands about sex offenders. But I'm here to tell you that definition is a very wide one. But I think the truth is starting to seep out and more and more news organizations are starting to figure out that this category actually includes teenage consensual sex. It includes people who get caught up in lewd and lascivious laws, which by the way cover a huge territory by themselves. It includes people that are married that go to lover lanes and get caught in uncompromising positions in the backseat by law enforcement, but you know something, they end up on the registry. And yet all these years later, it might be 10 years later, a next door neighbor who let's say is 41 years old, who 20 years ago, back when he was a young man, had an underage girlfriend. But today, he's got family, he's got a child, he lives in the neighborhood, but yet he's on this registry, his life is destroyed, he can't get work. He's a person that we fear because we don't understand how widely the net has been cast with respect to these sex offender laws. Yeah. Yeah. Public True. urination, True. streaking, mooning, these are things that will get you on that registry as well. Can you, imagine, can you imagine for a moment that somebody who out in the public says, well, those sex offenders can't be cured. Can you imagine that being applied to somebody who dropped his drawers and mooned an Amtrak train? Okay. In my opinion, all of these laws that have been brought to bear on the citizens of California, especially to registered sex offenders and their families, you know something? It's not about protecting the kids. You know what it is? It's about protecting the political careers of California's yeah, politicians. So what is so wrong with California's sex offender laws? If you're a parent and you're trying to protect your children, if you go to the registry and you find 100 names in your area, you don't know that the registry is so watered down as to be worthless in the sense that you can't identify the individuals who might be a potential harm to your family. Yes. That's not serving the public, is it? No! You know something? With regards to teenagers, sex happens, doesn't it? Yes! Worse than being worthless, though, registered sex offender laws actually create brand new victims. Mm -hmm. Besides being worthless, the laws don't take into account that there are unintended consequences. 
and these unintended consequences mean that because registered sex offenders have families also, that means we have children, it means our children suffer at the hands of these laws that are meant to protect children in the first place. Right. Right. Yes. 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 Children need their fathers. Yes. Yes. Fathers need their families. Yes. Yes. Fathers, registered sex offender fathers need jobs, they need homes, they need a stable life like every other American and participate like regular citizens as law-abiding citizens in our communities today. Yes. Yes. Woo. Yes. But I've got more bad news for you. Sex offender laws in California and other states, they go so far as to track nearly every aspect of a sex offender's life. We track not just their names and their home addresses, but their employers and their employer addresses, any schools they might attend, their vehicle descriptions, their license plates, and even now there are movements afoot to track email addresses and where they go on the web, even putting GPS bracelets on every single sex offender here in California, regardless of the offense, regardless of how long ago that offense occurred. That to me is outrageous in a state that is Ten billion dollars in debt today. With all of this personal information that is public available, what concerns me is that the the problems with vigilantism are on the increase. You may not know this, but murders and assaults on sex offenders is on the rise. I can give you a couple examples from 2006. In the state of Maine, there were two murders. A Canadian citizen came down to the United States in the state of Maine, looked up the sex offender registry, and found addresses, went to two homes, and shot to death two registered sex offenders. These were lawful, lawfully abiding sex offenders living in their own homes. One shot through the picture window of his home while he sat on the couch and the other one, a 19-year-old registered sex offender murdered in cold blood in public da in daylight there in the state of Maine. His crime was consensual sex with his, un with his girlfriend who was under age 18. In the state of Washington in 2006, a man dressed up in an FBI uniform, that is an FBI t-shirt, FBI hat, knocked on the door of two registered sex offenders that lived in the same residence shot to death in their homes. Last year also in the state of Tennessee, a registered sex offender's wife lived peacefully in their home. He went off elsewhere that day. A vigilante showed up and burned down the house and she, his wife, was in there. She died in that fire. These laws do not bring sensibility to this problem of sex abuse in the country. They create new victims. They create death. They, just, they, they create assault on the lawful, peaceful lives of registered sex offenders. How can a former sex offender successfully reintegrate into society with every possible obstacle put in front of him? How the hell are we supposed to survive? How the hell are we supposed to live our lives lawfully, peacefully, when every single thing that the state can do against us, bring against us, force against us, end up destroying us? How can we integrate? How can we live our lives? It's impossible to find a place to live. It's impossible to get a job. These laws are absolutely insane, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah.